a special virtual honky tonk program for my <laughs> for my friends over at Extended Care Peterborough. Hello, my mom Elsie on uh, in Rose Terrace and her uh, pal Doreen, who's the Elvis uh, fan. Gene across the hall, all the folks on staff, Deborah. Just want to say hello. Thank you for what you're doing. Appreciate it. Uh, so I thought I'd see if I can send a little bit of entertainment your way. If you get a chance, maybe, I don't know, one at a time, <laughs> you could show it to them anyway. We'll figure that out. But I want to send a special song out to my mom because this is her favorite. I hope she likes it. No, I don't want to update my computer. Jeez, I'm busy. Nothing will ever change me loving you. You're still holding me, but not the way you used to do. Love slipped through our fingers. Like ships that drift apart You packed a bag and left And in it was my heart I didn't have to worry Back when you were mine But the more I tried to hold you The less I was on your mind that one okay let's see oh There's nothing in all the world like what I've 
Was for Rain and stood below my window in the moonlight. We don't he promised. Your, we don't hear your problems. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay, so I have, hope everything's going well for you. Just to give you an idea of what I'm doing, I work at one of the big box stores. So we're keeping things going. We were uh, made one of the essential services and uh, we sell things like computers and cables and uh, boy oh boy are people buying that stuff up like crazy so but the company's doing really great they're uh, they got a big glass well plexiglass partition between the people and us and it's cutouts and and to their great credit and my vast relief uh, most people are are pretty great about it there they understand and we're trying to do this for their protection as well as everybody else this is as you understand there uh, so there's only been a few people like a handful that have been you know kind of day uh, day bending get you off on the wrong foot but heck you know most people are great so here's a tune that's um I don't know in case you enjoy your caffeine, this is a little pick-me-up I wrote a long time ago, and I'll, I'll play it for you now. It's called, I'm a Slave to My Coffee. I don't know if anyone can relate. My favorite fruit. Don't want no orange juice. That stuff just ain't no use. To get me started, there's just one thing to do. I dig the filter out 
and cram the beans about the water until the smell is floating rich in the air. I pull the water in as soon as butter in. It won't be long until I'm human again. You would not believe what caffeine does to me. It's a miracle cure. I'm a slave to my coffee. I'm a slave to my coffee. It goes right to my head and brings me back from the dead. I'm a slave to my coffee. I'm a slave to my coffee. When I get to my job, that coffee's wearing off. I need another one, a coffee to go. Before I start computing, while my computer's blue, I hit the luncheon for a cappuccino. Don't want no Irish cream. Special blend Colombian guard. I take it black and hard. It really hits the spot. It gives me palpitations deep in my heart. I think this just might be caffeine dependency, but it's just too soon to tell. I'm a slave to my coffee. I'm a I'm slave, slave to my coffee. I'm almost feeling fine. Fill me up one more time. I'm a slave to my coffee. I'm a slave to my coffee. I'm a slave to my cafe. I'm a slave, slave to my cafe. Got a problem with that? I'm a slave to my cafe. I'm, I'm a slave to my cafe. I'm almost feeling fine. Fill me up one more time. I'm a slave to my cafe. I'm a slave to my coffee. I'm a slave to my coffee. I'm a slave to my coffee. Okay, that is a slave to my coffee. By the way, uh, that actually, a version of that is available for free download on my website, and you can find it through this. There's my website there. If you're interested in any of these songs, that's where I'm playing them. I'm playing them from my website, so you have access to anything that I'm playing today. Oh, let's see. Now, here's a song that I wrote about a lady in downtown Peterborough, and uh, I was working at a music store at the time, and she served coffee right across the street. And she was from another time. She still is. She's, uh, at the time, she had this big bouffant beehive hairdo. And uh, always dressed in sort of like 50s uh, kind of big stuff. And she just has the most amazing personality and just brightens up everybody's day. And so I wrote this song about her. I hope you enjoy it. I've been around Thought I'd seen it all I've been to the top of the hill Seen the big and the small But that was before I saw Scary beautiful Nothing compares at all Scary beautiful Long raven hair Golden nose ring Picture the girl next door With some Betty Page showing Devil resides in her heavenly eyes. Life was so simple before. Scary, 
beautiful. Some other time, some other place. We might have had a chance, still I see her face. It's a scary, beautiful. I know we're worlds apart I wish it weren't so I'm tired of the things She's just getting to know That all disappears Scary beautiful It all goes away when I see Scary Beautiful Some other time, some other place We might have had a chance Try, but I can't look away. Scary, beautiful. Nothing else matters to me. Scary, beautiful. Scary.
this computer I'm afraid um, I wanted to tell a little quick story here about uh, I was touring with um, uh, her name was Cleta Haverland still is she's uh, out in the west coast now and I was all over Canada with her and south all over North America with her and we used to open up for some big shows and uh, once upon a time we were this would have been 1986 we were in um, Grand Prairie Alberta and it was February and it was cold and I mean cold and we were playing an arena, a hockey arena, <laughs> and in February, and we had the the Good Brothers had just come off, and so we had no time to chat, but we just stuck our heads into the, the into their um, dressing room and said, "Hey, how's it going out there?" And, and the one I forget which one, uh, he just held up his hands and he had taken his leather gloves and cut all the tips of his fingers. Ah, so that he could play. It was so cold in that arena that they had to chop up their leather gloves to play. Oh, my God. And, and he was right, man. It was cold anyway. So we played this thing, a huge crowd, you know, I don't know, 7,000, something like that. And um, when it was all over, oh, uh, the headliner that night was Hoyt Axton. And here's, here's the whole point of my story here. Is, um, I wanted to tell Doreen that um, I met Hoyt Axton. And now Hoyt Axton is the son of May Axton, who every, everybody, especially Doreen, would know wrote to things like Heartbreak Hotel for Elvis. So anyway, and she's, she's a monster songwriter in Nashville, Memphis, wherever, Nashville, I guess. So anyway, um, I had sent a copy of my record and, to um, Hoyt Axton, who was staying in the same hotel, and figuring, you know, like, hey, we're... We're, we're practically f pals, right? We're, we're opening up for this guy. So anyway, I sent a little note, very familiar, saying, hey, you know, loved your stuff. I had just seen a documentary about him, too, and he's really, really cool. Anyway, uh, I didn't get a chance to meet him. I never saw him. And so anyway, after this horrendous frozen concert, uh, we're heading out to our crappy little van to head on to the next gig. And... Uh, uh, Remember, I said it was cold. It was so cold that our um, Toyota van had frozen from the time that we had, you know, turned it off and done our, you know, hour show or whatever it was, 40 minutes, and come back out, and it had frozen. So we were waiting for the tow truck. Not the pinnacle of success, I can tell you. Standing in a, in a and you can hear the music, everybody having fun inside, right? You know, the place is rocking, you know, the arena's out there, and hey, I was just on that stage. 7,000 people having the time of their lives, and I'm outside waiting, you know, to freeze to death. Anyway, uh, we're all just sort of standing around the vehicle waiting for the tow truck, feeling pretty sorry for ourselves, and all of a sudden we hear, Hey, which one's Ray? I'm like, what? And I turned around, and uh, in the, the darkness of, you know, you know how in, when it's really cold, you can see 
the, the steam out of somebody. Well, he turned around and the lights were behind him and there's this great big guy with a cowboy hat and there's like this locomotive with this steam coming over out of his, uh, you know, charging toward me. I was like, oh boy, what have I done? Who is this guy? And turns out closer, he goes, this is Hoyt Axton. He's out in the middle of a parking lot in Grand Prairie, Alberta, yelling my name. And <laughs> he's, oh, I didn't want you to get away without me saying hi, and I got your record, and I'll give it a listen and all this. But anyway, we had this, and he's got this open white, sh white shirt, black uh, jacket, sort of blazer kind of a thing, and a cowboy hat, but his neck's wide open, and this is like ridiculously cold. And the whole time he's telling me these little pearls of wisdom, you know, like, remember this and don't do that. And I'm thinking, you've got to get inside, man. <laughs> You're going to freeze to death. Anyway, the, the big takeaway that I got from that little meeting was, don't let them change you. He said, uh, they tried to change me and I just wouldn't let them. He said, uh, they tried to send me to acting lessons. And he said, uh, they wanted me to walk around like a duck. And I... <laughs> So I just got out of and out of there as of that. I already can do that. So anyway, it was uh, it was quite an ordeal. But anyway, that was that was my little meeting with with Hoyt Axton. I met a bunch of people, which I'll uh, tell you at a future date if you're interested in that kind of stuff. But anyway, oh, I have a new song, and uh, I'm afraid it's not the the happiest of songs, but uh, it's only because. I look around and have to make my comment about what's going on in the world, so here it is. Looking back at the future. Hopefully not. <laughs>
pal with me tonight. Uh, Jasper is still around, but uh, he's not able to go up the stairs anymore. That's one of the reasons why I haven't been doing my shows. Um, kind of, he feels, I, I know, I get the look. He's, I can't do the stairs, man. And I understand. He's 14. And he's, he's feeling it. So, anyway, at least, uh, so I'll, I'll do, you know, easing back into doing shows from time to time and for special occasions and for especially for my friends over at Extended Care. And I just want to take a, a moment and say thank you for everything that you're doing. I know uh, there's a lot of it's, it's, it seems to be hip to, you know, be uh, thankful, and but I, I really am. And uh, so I appreciate everything that you're doing. I want to do a song and dedicate it to what you're doing because, you know, it comes time where... And that's one of the reasons why I'm talking about Jasper. And it's, uh, it, there comes a time when it's not worth carrying on, you know. And that's, at some point, I'm going to be facing that with my pal Jasper. So here's a song all about knowing when it's time. Let's have a happier song for a change, okay? Come on, let's... You got something else that's happy? Okay. Oh, yes, I do, as a matter of fact. 
this oh this is a nice little song this is a happy little sort of you know what I've had it uh, things have been tough for a while but uh, that's it I've had it I'm turned the corner and where is it come on this it should be right here there it is. Okay, so as so I turn the corner, and there's no more looking back here. Featuring. featuring Kalita Haverland singing backup. So there there she is. My old pal of many, many years. I'm 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 at the same time proud and uh <laughs> embarrassed to say how long we've known each other, but uh yeah, we're still pals. Uh I guess one more song. I don't want to overtax everybody with my uh you know, my randomness. So what I'll do is I'll finish with a song that uh, another one of my mother's favorites um, and I'll do this again if it goes over if you're interested in hearing that I'll, I'll happily do this again you know sort of on a weekly or basis kind of a thing um, let me just find a proper song to end on and I move my camera sorry I keep forgetting where my camera is uh, hmm it's a really good song Oh, oh, I hear him. I hear him. I hope he's not going to try and come up the stairs. That wouldn't be nice. Ah, here we are. So I'm going to finish off today with uh, saying thanks to everybody over at Extended Care and thinking about you. Sorry I can't come in, but hey, it's world pandemic or some damn thing. I don't know. But anyway, they're, uh, they're looking after you and uh, keeping you safe, and I appreciate that. And so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to keep safe, trying to keep working, because if I get sick and I can't work, then... Big problem. So 
we don't want that. So anyway, I'll finish with a song that went to number 33 with the anchor in the Canadian chart back in 1987, and this is called Where's That Woman? It played on Country 105. Thank you very much for spending this time with me and again my name is Ray Ellis I guess I didn't say that to begin with so but I'm Ray Ellis um, hi to Elsie Doreen Jean all the staff at extended care in Peterborough thank you for what you're doing hoping you're staying safe and uh, so long for now <laughs>